What is going on, Crimson City? My name is Crimson Seabad, and I'd like to welcome you guys back to another episode of the Pokemon Sacred Gold Scrambled Egglock. We are here today with episode number 15, if I'm right. And that's crazy to think about, because that means this is almost the longest running LP on the channel. Blue hit 20, blue hit 20, but this is almost the longest running. I hope you guys are excited. If you are, be sure to show some love to that like button down below. It is greatly appreciated, as always. Helps me out, helps the channel out, helps the video out, helps everything out. Let's do a team recap really quickly. For those of you who missed it, we have... Toff, the Adamant Cubone holding a Thick Club. She has the Storm Drain ability with Earthquake, Ice Punch, Thunder Punch, and Fire Punch. Next up, we do have Terror, our Adamant Natured Aerodactyl holding the Expert Belt with the Rock Head ability, Brave Bird Head Smash, Double Edge, and Fly. Next up, we do have West, the Adamant Scissor with the Flash Fire ability, Flare Blitz, Mega Horn, Meteor Mash, and Roost. Next, we have the lovely Ray Wrights, the Modest Gardevoir holding the Choice Specs with the Download ability, Psychic, Roar of Time, Luster Purge, and Hydro Cannon. Next up, we do have Sunshine, our Jolly Jolteon with the Levitate ability, Thunder Wave, Thunderbolt, Water Spout, and Grass Knot. And last but not least, we have the strongest member of the team right now, Wing Dokes, with the Adam the Adam and Tauros holding that Life Orb with the Huge Power ability, Drain Punch, Swords Dance, Extreme Speed, and Crunch. So, last episode, we made it over here to Mahogany Town. Mahogany Town? Mahogany Town. We made it over here to Mahogany Town. We hatched a bunch of your guys' eggs. If you did not see that, check out the end of last episode. And we have some stuff to do here involving a Red Gyarados. If you guys don't know about that, Red Gyarados is a thing in this game. I'm pretty sure it's a thing in this game. I've actually never made it this far in uh, Hard Gold or Soul Silver. But we do have some trainers up here we can clear out. We do have a man by the name of Lance we can talk to. We're still missing a Pokemon that can learn Surf. Uh, this man brings out a Parasect, which is Grass Bug, and I want nothing to do with that with Toph, so we are hard switching into my Steel type. Question of the day for you guys What is your favorite Pokemon Company foreshadow? What I mean by that is, we saw Ho Oh before Gen 2. We saw what I assume to be Mega Gyarados in Gen 1. We saw... What else did they give us? What else did they give us? Um, the the evolved form, or the pre-evolution of Muna. Maybe it is Muna. Yeah, because Muna Masharna. So, uh, we saw Muna. They talked about Muna in Gen 1. We saw the Alolan Executor in Gen 1. That was on the, uh, that was on the cover art for a... Um, for a release back in 99, I believe it was, the original Jungle Trading Card Game series. We saw that Alolan Executor, the Executor with a really long neck. Uh, what else did we see? What else did we see? There's one more. I feel like there's one more. I don't know. Let me know. Let me know your guys' thoughts down below. I definitely think, I think before the gym we might need to level up just a tad bit. Um, but let me know your thoughts. I really do like, I can't think of one that I like the most. I do kind of, I do, actually I do kind of like Mega Gyarados. I do like Mega Gyarados. I do like that foreshadowing just a bit. Um, I also do have to say that uh, the other one that I really like... I mean, Ho-Oh was obvious. Ho-Oh was very obvious. Everybody, when we saw that bird finally, we were like, We've seen that before! But, I mean, kind of looking at Mega Gyarados, it's not, it's not easy to say that it's not... That's not Mega Gyarados either. Like, what else would that be? What else, what else would that even be? I don't even know. But it's hard to say it's not Mega Gyarados. The Alolan Executor, that definitely, that definitely caught me off guard when I saw the comparisons between the two. I was like, that is absolutely bonkers, man. That is absolutely bonkers, and I am so excited for more Alolan Pokemon forms. Team Rocket's here. Team Rocket, what do you guys want? Hold it there, kiddo. The total is one thousand to go through. Thank you very much. What? Did I just get robbed? I've still got 22 grand. Like, I'm not sweating. I'm chilling. I'm chilling. I really dig the Alolan... What was I saying? The Alolan forms. I really dig the Alolan forms. I think it's super cool um, that there's more vibrant sunlight, so the plant is obviously going to grow more. Like, that's... Like, a lot of people who I've seen do, like, speculation videos about the Alolan forms are like, why is this neck so long? 
It's a plant. If you put a plant in sunlight, it's gonna grow more. If you, it's like if you ever see somebody put a goldfish into not a bowl, but into like an actual pond or a lake, those things get huge. It, they, they grow based on their environment. And part of the thing, <clears throat> excuse me, part of what, um, part of, what do I want to do here, Wes? Um, so when you put the plant in sunlight, it's obviously going to grow more so. No! No, 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 no. I just had flashbacks. I just had flashbacks so bad. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Iron defense. I kind of want to learn iron defense for exploding gravelers. Oh my gosh. Um, Vibrava? I've got Ice Punch on top. I don't think I should be able to do too much to top. Um... What was I gonna say? What was I gonna say? So when you put the plant in sunlight, obviously it's gonna grow. What else do they show? The the Pokemon adapting, the Sand True and the Sand Slash. Um Both of those things, obviously, now the fairy typing is a little weird, like different. I don't know how it would go about that, I can't theorize, but obviously when Pokemon are subjected to we've seen Delta Species in other games before, but obviously they weren't main series games. I love you, Seuss, but obviously they weren't main series games. Um seen Pokemon adapt to climates before, so now the actual Pokemon company is taking that, taking that idea and applying it to their game, which is cool because you get to see things like, uh, give me the special attack. Okay, we're not. I'll just use a second. Um, now we get to see things like an ice sand shrew, so obviously the ice, it, it turned into the ice type as opposed to the ground type. It now, it completely changed its typing because before ice was super effective against ground, so now it became one with its own weakness. Like, it adapted to its weakness um, and also embraced the steel type. I imagine when the ground gets really cold, it's hard as steel. So now we have ice and steel type. Granted, this does give us a four times weakness to fire and fighting, but um, it is what it is. Why can I not? I was like, why can I not hit the X button right now? I'm just gonna fly, like, fly back really quickly while I keep rambling about Alolan forms. But, <laughs> but the same thing with the, um, the same thing with the, uh, Vulpix. It didn't really embrace the weakness. Fire's good against ice, obviously. But it did need to adapt, and obviously, you know, beforehand, the pelt that it gave off, um, it did have the drought ability. The pelt that it had, uh, emanated so much heat that it would cause a drought ability. And so now what it needed to do in order to survive to adapt to the coldness that that pelt needed to protect itself from the snow. It needed to be able to come one with the snow so it could survive. So it has snow cloak now and it's ice. I can't really explain the ice fairy. I can't explain the ice fairy, but there, there, there's been talk by, there's been talk and then maybe by now they've been confirmed. But the, the other leaks that are around are, um... Alolan Arcanine, which is a water type, and people are like, how can a big fire dog go straight to water? If you look at the island, if you look at the, the, the region of Alola, it's surrounded by islands, and the only way to get from island to island is by either flying, by boat, or by swimming. I don't think they're just going to let a bunch of stray Arcanines on a boat to transport them whenever they want. I don't think that's the case. Um... And I don't think they're teaming up with any other Pokemon, so they need to learn how to travel. And the only way to do that is is by swimming. So that that's again my thoughts on the Alolan Arcanine. Um, Butterfree becomes Bug Psychic. Obviously, we've seen um, obviously we've seen Executor become a Grass Dragon. My thoughts on that are uh, there, there's a variety there's a variety of things. Um, in the Alola region that can, that are different. And I imagine the, the fauna in the area is different. I imagine the fruits in the area are different. And those can also, imagine like the Orange Islands, where they ate the pink fruit and they became pink. I imagine that sometimes maybe some, uh, some, un some unnatural fruits in the, in the diet of the Butterfree can cause it to get that psychic typing. Maybe it'll have a different color variation. Who knows? Um, those are my thoughts on that. Uh, the Nido, apparently the Nido King and the Nido Queen line become poison fighting as opposed to poison ground. It's a jungle. It's an actual jungle. And um, 
being a typical poison ground type is not going to be as effective, I feel, as um, as a uh, poison fighting type. It needs to become a predator. It needs to survive. It's in the it's in the it's in the jungle on an island. It needs to become the actual king and queen, so to speak, of dominating this island. Oh yeah, one shot that chance. Give me all that num 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 experience, though. Shout out to Toph leveled up. Um, so it does need to become a predator in its own sense. It wants to learn fling. No, thank you. No, thank you. I would like to give up on fling. Um, it needs to become a predator in its own sense. So poison fighting. Abracadabra and Alakazam line. Apparently they are pure fighting. Again, this reflects back on the fact that they need to become a predator and Toph is evolving! Toph is evolving! Yes! Yes! Oh, it does my heart good. It does my heart good. I love me some Marowak. I love me some Marowak. I love me some Marowak. Unfortunately, though, I have... Let's learn to move Thrash? No, thank you. I really would like Bone Meringue. Just because that's the, the, you know, the classic staple move. Hi, you like Clefairy too? They're so very cute, aren't they? I think we can be good friends. I want to know your phone number. Let's talk about Clefairy. How about Nah? How about Nah? So I actually have to go put on Marowak's new ability. So let's see if that worked or not. Uh, Toph should have the Storm Drain ability still. Yes. Okay. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So Toph does have the Storm Drain ability. Got that lovely, lovely Marowak. We do get an encounter up here, actually. I just thought about that. We do get an encounter up here. Uh, it's going to be a Pidgeotto. Pidgeotto! Oh! That's my Pidgeotto impression. It being very early in the morning. That hurt my voice. Huh. Um, I can Thunder Wave with Sunshine! And then hit him with the Grass Knot! And then Weaken it, and then we get to hatch more eggs, which I'm excited about. Don't use Whirlwind. Twister. Okay, cool. That's actually fine by me. I would... Bitch. Pidgeotto, I hate you. Oh, was this going to be an easier to capture Pokemon? A Lanoon. Yes, actually, it was an easier to capture Pokemon. Oh, and it was extreme speed in this game. Shit. Alright, well, I was about to say. I shouldn't have ran, but I did. Because I mash buttons because I'm a bad person. Don't mash buttons. Button mashing awareness month. Don't do that. Okay. So, uh, Red Gyarados is up here. We got some stuff to take care of. Lake of Rage. Fishing Guru's house. Oh, I gotta go talk to Fishing Guru? Is that right? Do I need to talk to you? Can you give me something? Lake of Rage is actually a crater made by Raging Gyarados. The crater filled up with rainwater and the lake was formed. That's a story passed on from my grandpa's great-great-grandpa. It used to be that you catch slide of the magic card there, but I don't understand what's happening. So, we do get a Lake of Rage encounter as well as the Red Gyarados. Um, the Gyarados are angry. It's a bad omen. So we do need a Pokemon that can learn Surf, unfortunately. Um, I might need to go find that. Oh, cool. I can actually fly straight to the Lake of Rage now. So, I think I need to go get Sad Boy out. And try to teach him Surf. Since we did lose our lovely, lovely Shadow Seabed. Who knew Surf? So let's look in here right quick. I think the only Pokemon in our party that can learn it is Sad Boy. Um, so I'm gonna put Terra. No, I need Terra to fly. Um, I'm gonna move Ray Rights for a bit. I'm gonna move Ray. And I'm gonna grab Sad Boy and hopefully Sad Boy can learn Surf. If not, we need to go find something else to do. <laughs> Essentially. And that would make for a really short episode because then I'd have to, like, go find token mons. Um,. I mean, we could always use we could always use HM slaves even though they're dead. That's not that's not the issue. You are allowed to use fainted Pokemon only as HM slaves because otherwise it would make impossible for game progression. Make it absolutely impossible. So we can use worst case scenario. We can include a uh, a um, a fainted Shadow Seabed in with our party for him to surf. So I do want to save here because the Lake of Rage is a scary, scary thing, and I do want to catch this Gyarados. Because I believe it's a level 40 encounter, which is going to be really cool. It's going to be absolutely phenomenal. Um, it does make me want to lead off with Wesley, because he resists this stab. He resists it. Oh, and I got to teach. 
Oh, I did teach Shadow Boy Surf. What? Hello? Did I do that? Did I do that, or did he already have it? What? I think I taught him Surf. I don't remember teaching Sad Boy Surf. Oh, well, here's our Lake of Rage encounter as well, by the way. And it's a level 10 magic card. I can't tell you how annoyed I am right now. I cannot tell you how annoyed I am right now. I'm just throwing an Ultra. Uh, I'm just going to throw a Pokeball at it. Okay, come on. I don't want to waste all my Pokeballs on this thing. Really? Oh my god, I'm not. Alright, alright, Sunshine. Paralyze this thing, please. There we go. There we go. Please and thank you. I don't want to waste all my Pokeballs on this thing. Thank you. Uh, given a game of the cop magic card. Yes, you guys already know what it is. S C R A M B L E D. Okay. Squaw box. Squaw box. I actually do want to kind of lead off with sunshine just so I can um, get that paralysis off. Just so I get that paralysis off. Hopefully it's not like crazy high. Level 40. It's a level 40 encounter actually. Okay, so Sunshine, I need you to live a attack from a Gyarados so I can T-Wave it. And I need Gyarados to be fully paralyzed and not attack my Sunshine. Twister. That's not sad, I was about to say. So now, I go into my Dragon Resist. Because he knows Twister, obviously. I hope he doesn't bestow no Dragon Ranger. I can take a few Dragon Rangers, though. Aqua Tail. Aqua Tail in the rain. That's actually doing stupid damage. What? That's stupid damage. I don't have a water resist. I don't have a water resist. I really... I'm at a loss of what to do here. Um, I need you to get fully paralyzed at some point, please. Please, Gyarados, please. Like, I don't think I'm asking for much right now. I don't think I'm asking for a lot right now. Please just... Don't. Okay, that's that I can take. That I can take. I can take an Ice Fang. I can take that. And I can damage you with... Uh, Meteor Mash? Yeah, I'll go for Meteor Mash. You resist it. I'll be able to get some chip damage off on you. I can stall you out of Aqua Tails as well. It's just doing so much damage. Oh my god. It's such... It's, it's it's incredible how much damage that's doing. I mean, I know it's in the rain and I know it's all about 40 Gyarados, but still, my gosh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm gonna go for another Meteor Mash here. Paralyzed and he can't move. Cool. So I'm going to now take this opportunity to go for a Flare Blitz in the rain against a Water type that should weaken him down just a bit more. It's not putting him to the red just yet. Oh, I didn't know it was Rain Dance. Awesome, cool. Keep, yeah, keep keep choking right now, Gyarados. Keep, keep gargling. We got this. We got this. So now he's in the red. He is fully paralyzed. Again, yes! Yes! We got this in the bag pokeballs ultra ball go he's in the red he is paralyzed there's no reason not to catch this thing right now there's absolutely no reason we shouldn't catch this thing unless he wants to be a dick unless he wants to be a dick then then we have an issue here all right oh my god i thought that was a crit i sped up just so i could get through the 
animation and was like, hmm, my, like, my, my, every muscle in my body just, like, tightened up all at once. Alright, I really don't want this episode being chased in the right paradox, like, fully paralyzed, yes! We're winning this battle. I want to go for another Flare Blitz, but I'm afraid at this point. I'm afraid at this point. Alright, come on, Ultra Ball, please. Red health, paralyzed, two, three... Yes! Alright, yes! Cut the fucking red hair goes. Let's go, baby. Let's go. We are getting a powerful egg from that. We are getting a powerful egg from that. They say that during a past strife, Gyarados would appear and leave blazing ruins in its wake. The atrocious Pokemon. Give a nickname to the caught Gyarados. Yes, I will. S-C-R-A-M-B-L-E-D. Head to that squaw box. Head to that squaw box. Crimson obtained the red scale. I don't remember what the red scale does, but we got the red scale. And we get to see another magic curve here. Oh, level 20. That would have been really cool. That would have been really cool. That would have been awesome. That red Gyarados wasn't acting right. As I feared, somebody must have forced it to evolve. Did you come here because of the wild tales? You're Crimson? I'm Lance, a trainer like you. I heard some rumbling, so I came to investigate. I saw the way you battled earlier, Crimson. I can tell that you're a trainer with considerable skill. If you don't mind, could you help me investigate? Yeah, sure, bud. Excellent. It seems that the Lake of Rage Magikarp are being forced to evolve. A mysterious radio broadcast coming from Mahogany is probably the cause. And that suspicious souvenir shop. I'll be waiting for you in Mahogany, Crimson. Alright, so we do get to head back over yonder to Mahogany Town because we have a souvenir shop to encounter, to in get involved with in some way, manner, way, shape, or form. We do get that. Um, we also do get to hatch two eggs, which I am super, super excited about. And I hope you guys are too. We need to put, uh, we need to put Sad Boy back in the box. We need to put Sad Boy back in the box. And we need to, so let's drop off Sad Boy. Um, let's pick up the Magikarp, level 10. And then I'm gonna put Wing Dokes down for a minute so we can grab our scrambled our scrambled tokens. Um, I believe we left off at 4, so let's go to... F no, it looks like we left off at 3, so go to 4. Go to 4, okay. So our first egg is going to be hatched at level 10, and it is going to be... Who is this? Who is this? Walrus holding the Toxic Orb, so thank you whoever sent in Walrus. Box four, level ten, toxic orb. All right, let's see what this bad boy is. Let's see what this bad boy is. Let's see what he's about. I'm excited. I'm excited. Oh, walrus. I feel like it'd be a spiel. I feel like it's gonna be a spiel. Oh my god, it's a little spiel. Oh my god, he's so cute. He little ball. He little ball. Uh, so it was all caps, um, all caps, and then lowercase, R-U-S, wall run. Look at him, he's a little, he a little, little, little field ball. He just goes boop. I'm sorry. I can't control myself sometimes. He a little field ball, and he goes boop. Alright, so we will go to box five next, where we get a level 40 egg. All right, Twister, Ice Ring, Aqua Tail, Marine Dance. That's actually not bad. An Adamant Gyarados! Yo, I kind of really just want to use this on the team. I kind of really just want to use this on the team. Oh my god, we got an appropriate nature Gyarados and everything. So level 40, we have Lola. Lola with the Never Melt Ice. Level 40 in box 5. So I'm really curious to see what Lola is going to be. I'm really curious to see what Lola is going to be. Oh, Lola holding the Never Melt Ice. That's two ice types in a row. That's actually really weird. Oh, look at his little smoochum. A little smoochum. And that means we get a jinx. Would I like to give a nickname to the newly hatched smoochum? Yes, I would. We have L O L A. Little smoochum smoochum. 
All right, so I'm gonna go put on the appropriate ability and I'll be right back, guys. So we have a Sphiel and a Smoochum to check out. So here we have Walrus, the level 10 Sphiel with the Calm Nature, the Toxic Orb, with the Poison Heal ability, Toxic Leech Seed Substitute, and Ice Beam. That's actually, wow. That's actually hella, like, stally, but it's okay because, wow. Okay, I ain't mad, I ain't mad. Sub Toxic Orb, Poison Heal, Ice Beam, Leech Seed. That's fine by me. It's fine by me. Walrus can learn Surf. Next up, we do have Lola, the Timid Smooch of Holding the Never Melts Ice with the No Guard ability. Lovely Kiss, Blizzard, Psychic, and Zap Cannon. Wow. I like that a lot, actually. So thank you to whoever sent in Lola and Walrus. Definitely two Pokemon that I am looking forward to trying out during the remainder of the Let's Play. We can go put them in our Squaw Box over here. Over here. So let's move all of you guys. We'll pick up uh, Wingdokes and Ray. Add them back to the party. And we got, look at this. Look at all the progress we make. We got ourselves a lovely Marowak. We're hatching eggs. We're catching Gyarados. This episode is literally chasing the red Gyarados. Like, that's literally what it was. I apologize. I apologize. But uh, for the sake of giving you guys another long episode, because I know the past few episodes have been longer, I'm going to finish this episode off right here. It is a little shorter than in previous days, but next episode we do have a lot to do. We do have to go to the souvenir shop. Mahogany will probably end up going to Goldenrod. We might take on the gym. I don't know what all we're going to do next episode, but I want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you have enjoyed, be sure to leave a like on the video as it does greatly It does greatly affect me it is in a good way in a good way it does support me it supports the channel it supports the video and as always guys answer the question of the day let me know what your favorite foreshadowing in the pokemon franchise has been i love you guys i want to remind you guys everyone everyone each and every one of you to always be great and do great and i will talk to you all soon later